afternoon and welcome to Moments of Hope with uh, yours truly, Pastor Curtis Robert Grant, uh, Desire and Hope Missionary about this church family. We are so glad to be alive once again on this wonderful day. Uh, for those of you that are going to join with us in the conference call, you can dial 515-606-5380 and then the access code is 636-090. Uh, God bless you and God keep you and uh, hope all is well with you and your family. And uh, we are going to continue our study on Psalms 1. Um, we have been um, going through this particular psalm, uh, trying to get some kind of understanding and hopefully it has been uh, good for you and your understanding and uh, uh, the recipe for actually trying to be happy. And so as we have also uh, stated about this particular song, uh, we don't know exactly who wrote it, but we thank God that he did because it is instructions that are lodged in his song that gives to us the uh, recipe for happiness. He opens up by saying, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scoundrel. Uh, the word blessed actually talks about happiness. And so he says, if you want to be happy, you have to at least follow these three things. Number one, uh, don't take advice from the ungodly. Number two, don't walk it in the way of sinners. And that simply means don't act like sinners. Then number three, don't sit it in the seat of the scoundrel. Don't hang out with them. Don't let your disposition become like that of the world. And so when you see these things, he's trying to help you understand and then he takes the next word he said um, um, but his delight is in the law of the Lord he uses the word but to tie these thoughts together because they are contrasting thoughts but uh, his delight is in the law of the work and uh, in the, in the law uh, and so that delight simply means he enjoys reading the word of God and so he talks about him meditating on that word which means to study which means to ponder which means to uh, really, really absorb and get an understanding of it. And he says he does it day and night. And when he uses these terms day and night, he wants to almost imply that the man of God is consumed with uh, uh, reading the word of God so that his mind is not consumed with else and other subjects of, of life of this world. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, whatever controls your mind controls your life. And so he goes on and talks about he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. His leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And we've talked about that, about uh, the word uh, uh, planted by the river actually means to be transplanted. So God roots you up from one place and he plants you by this river. Uh, we talked about the rivers of water that comes through uh, the passing of the tree to feed it life, to give it life. And so we, we designated that that water in the spiritual aspect of it is actually uh, the word of God, Jesus Christ, which actually <clears throat> is a well full of water springing up into everlasting life. And so we talked about that. And when you are planted in the word of God, and the word of God is constantly feeding you. You have characteristics of a tree. We talked about those characteristics. We talked about your solidness. We talked about your uh, ability not to be moved. We talked about uh, your ability to produce fruit. And so we talked about some of those things concerning uh, uh, the presentation of the psalmist. And then he goes on, he talks about, and uh, um, his, uh, his leaves shall not wither, which means that he don't fluctuate. He's always consistent in his presentation. And then when he talks about, um, uh, when he goes on, uh, I'm trying to get these, these thoughts together. Uh, when he goes on to uh, present to you uh, that his leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he do shall prosper, then we talked about uh, how he is expressive in his love towards uh, humanity. And it's not talking about cars and houses and things of that nature, but it's literally talking about how he loves God and how he loves the creations of God, the human, um, uh, the human uh, that he has before him, the human beings that is in his presence. And so when you start talking about prosperity, uh, you know, don't always jump to the material because I think prosperity has more to do with uh, spirituality than carnality. 
And so we hopefully you can understand that. And then what he says, uh, 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 the, the, but the ungodly are not sure, but I like the shaft which the wind driveth away. And I think that we talked about that on yesterday, about the shaft being the thin uh, uh, covering on the corn. And when they shuck the corn, uh, they would take the corn, put it in a basket, throw it up in the air. And when the wind would come, the wind would blow it away because it's uh, useless, it's light, it, it, it's husk. Uh, and it's very, very uh, uh, unstable because it has no weight to it. And so when he says the ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft, it wants to submit that the ungodly who is not established in God actually has a thin, they, they are surface individuals. They have no stability. They have no solidness to them. And so at the end of the day, they are moved by any and everything. Uh, the wind is, uh, I wouldn't say symbolic here, but it's actually can be symbolic in, in ways because there are people who are in this world and uh, it doesn't it doesn't doesn't have to be wind it can be you know trouble it could be corona and what I'm saying even in now uh, situations of this people are being moved man because when you don't have the security of the word of God and you don't have the relationship with God as you should then a whole lot of stuff moves you. You understand? And so when you start talking about being moved, uh, the, by, like the shaft moved the wind, or the wind moved the shaft, you have to understand that we are moved by a lot of stuff in the world. We're some, some people are moved by finances. Some people are moved by the fact that they ain't got the right car, the right house. But the, but the truth of it is, is when you're rooted and grounded in the word, that stuff don't move you because you are not you're not surface individual. You're solid. You got you got you you got that stability in your life, and you understand that life ain't about stuff. And so when he talks about uh, that the wind, you know, like the you know shaft which the wind bloweth away, uh, then he wants to submit to the ungodly, not to the godly, because the godly is something different. And then he goes on and he talks about. Uh, 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 um, uh, that the uh, the ungodly are not so, uh, but I like the shaft which the wind drive away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinner in the congregation of the righteous. And when he talks about the judgment, you you have to understand because he's he's dealing with this particular life. You have to understand that he's talking about uh, the chastening of the sons. And so when you look at that, uh, let me quickly read it to you. Uh, it's in Hebrews twelve and four. Uh, and if you could find it real quick, uh, uh, this won't take very long. Uh, and so at the end of the day, you begin to understand the chastening of God. Uh, and if I can find it, uh, we'll read it to you. Uh, Hebrews 4 and um, did I say 12 and 4. 12 and 4 is what I'm looking for. All right. And so um, here he says in 12 and 4, uh, uh, it says, Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, but ye have forgotten the exaltation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my sons. Despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when, art, when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourge every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastening, wherefore, uh, wherefore all that are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. And so uh, when we start talking about chastening in the world, uh, it wants to submit that uh, as a child of God, God will always uh, uh, allow you to experience things and if the truth be told, the only, the individual who's going through it is the only one that knows is it really chastening or not. Because, you know, if you remember Job's friend, when they came to Job's situation, uh, Bildad, Eliphaz, and Zophar automatically thought that Job had done something wrong uh, because trouble broke out in his life. But, 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 but when you read the story, you know that trouble didn't break out in Job's life because he did something wrong. Uh, trouble broke out in Job's life because he did something right. And so that's why we have to be careful how we judge one, one another based on what's going on in our lives because only the believer really knows if it's chastisement or if it's just a test. 
And so at the end of the day, you, when you see your brother or your sister going through uh, some things, don't uh, automatically jump to conclusion that God is chasing them and God is getting them back. Because y'all, the truth of it is, don't nobody know that but the believer himself. And so we need to pray for one another that the Lord would be merciful in whatever it is, whether it be a test or a chastening. We got to learn to love each other enough that when we see people, uh, especially our brothers and sisters going through uh, the encountering, uh, the, uh, the encounters of, of life and we see things are rough on, uh, don't stand by there and, and laugh and giggle. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. Because at the end of the day, it might be you on the next turn. And so we have to learn how to hold each other up while we're going through our rough times. And so at the end of the day, uh, he talks about uh, uh, that, you know, the sinner and the un, uh, ungodly can't, can't endure it, uh, uh, chastisement. And so uh, people who, who, you know, get their feelings hurt, they get the heartbroken, things of that nature, they'll walk away from God. I, you know, I, I wonder sometimes, uh, were they ever sons in the first place? Because if you cannot endure chastening, then you have to ask yourself, what kind of relationship do you actually have with God? And so at the end of the day, I've, I've experienced a lot of people who have literally just walked away from God for whatever reason. And I'm praying that is, you know, they just mad and just get a temporary break and they finally come back to them senses and come back to the Lord. But the truth of it is that if God chastens you or you go through something that's really rough and you walk away from God, I guess the question that you really got to ask yourself is were you really a son in the first place? Because every son will have to go through chastening because the Lord loveth him. And if you are truly a son, after the chastening is over, you go back to the restored relationship that you had with your father in the beginning. Because every son has to be chastened by his father or he is no longer a son. And so at the end of the day, judgment takes place. And the ungodly don't stand because it, they, you know, they don't have no regard for God and the, uh, uh, the ungodly and the sinner. They don't stand and they will not be in the congregation of the righteous. Okay. And so we can either deal with this now or we can deal with it later because both judgments are, are seen in this particular presentation. And so I just don't have enough time to deal with the, the uh, you know, uh, the judgment seat of Christ and then the, the white throne judgment because it's a whole nother matter. And so at the end of the day, I hope something is said to help you to get you through these items uh, so that you'll understand uh, at the end of the day, God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Don't forget at one o'clock every day, uh, the family of Zion is praying together. Uh, for this whole world, for everything that is going on. And then uh, for those of you that are not a part of Zion, you can come on because we're all part of the family of God in Christ Jesus. Come pray with us because we are praying every day at 1 o'clock to make sure that we can uh, keep our focus and our hearts on God and that God would heal the land. God, continue to bless you and your household may all go well with you. Uh, and uh, let us uh, have just a moment of prayer. Gracious and kind Father, take these feeble words and these feeble attempts from God to bless your people. God, I pray that these words will fall on good ground, that it produce fruit, that you be glorified in everything we do. Bless us now, and we'll be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.